5, preacher? Are we ever going to get to Matthew chapter 5? Well, I'll tell you, we're about uh, at least a year from getting it to chapter 6, okay? But no, uh, what I want to do today is uh, we're going to start on the next one, which is talking about uh, Jesus goes over six laws that the Pharisees wanted to just look at on an outwardly way. Jesus turned them inwardly on us. He turned each one of them inwardly on us. And, of course, we've got, you know, murder, adultery, marriage, uh, uh, the oaths, um, loving your enemies. And then we get into uh, chapter 6. Uh, as we make our way through uh, Jesus' sermon, um, I want to encourage many of you all that we're going to go over a lot of things that many people are dealing with. Such as today, he deals with anger. Um, and we're going to spend uh, just one week on anger and also on some of these other things. But I want to encourage you to be on the lookout for anxiety. Uh, he deals with anxiety, and that's something in this day and time a lot of people deal with. So I want to encourage you in the coming weeks that we're going to deal with anxiety. What does the Bible say about anxiety? And uh, try to help through some of that. But if you have your Bibles, I hope you do. If you don't, then open your electronic copy. And uh, we'll be in Matthew chapter 5 and start in verse 21. He said here, he says, You have heard that it was said to you, those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of counsel. But whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your a gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there until you have paid the last penny. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, I have, uh, I have been worn out with this sermon, God. <coughs> Lord, I pray that you help me to preach it in a way that people can understand. And Lord, I pray that you use your word to begin to cut things out of our life that does not belong. God, I pray that you just be with the reading of your word. I pray you bless it, Lord. God, I pray that you be with me this morning. God, help me to preach like a dying man to dying people. Because that is what I am. God, help me this morning. For your words are heavy. <laughs> But God, they're meant to help us and grow us. Lord, I thank you so much and I love you. And I ask all these things in your precious, precious holy name. Amen. I know I ask a lot of questions before I start preaching, but this is why I do this. I do this because I want you to be thinking. I want you to think about what I'm getting ready to say. So I want you to think about how honest you're getting ready to be with yourself, okay? How many in this room, now if, you're, if, you, if you want to raise your hand, that's fine. Uh, I'll, we're just going to take a picture of your room. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I wonder how many in this room can honestly say, Preacher, I struggle with anger. Preacher, I seriously struggle with anger. You don't have to raise your hand. But I really struggle with getting angry. I, get, I really struggle with what I do after I become angry. Listen. There is a righteous anger that I'm going to talk about as well. And that is an anger that does not go past not beyond being angry righteously. But what do you do after you get angry? Now I'm going to tell you a little story. And if you happen to be uh, related to the lady that almost hit me, then tell her I love her and I forgive her. But I was riding down the road. I was headed to the gym and I had all these things on my mind. And what was not on my mind was a car coming over into my lane that was literally Right beside, right beside me. Right beside me. I mean, I was looking in her window. She was looking in my window. And she was coming toward me. The only thing I could do is go toward the sidewalk. 
And so I beat the horn, and I thought, well, man, surely. So she, I guess, woke up, realized she was coming over there, and swerved it back over there. And so what did the preacher do? Did he stop witness to her? No, sir. He put that right foot down all the way to the floor. Whoa! Watch the gas needle go down. I was angry because she almost hit me because she was probably playing with her phone or something. I, I had all these reasons to be mad at her and to be angry at her. She almost hit me. I had every reason to be angry with her, right? Man, it got quiet in here. <laughs> I know, I know my amen corner just went to children's church, but goodness gracious. Dr. Brown's up. <laughs> amen. Well, let me give you another. I called somebody this week that I hadn't spoke to in a while. I had not wronged them, but they had kind of, you know, I guess wronged me, so I was being under deep conviction of my sermon. By the way, I deal with this all week before you get it on Sunday. So I call them up and I say, hey man, I, I know last time we talked, we didn't leave on such good terms. I just wanted to call and tell you I love you and I, I, I'm sorry if I hurt your... Man, they took a stab at me right when I got on the phone. And so I have my Bible open on the desk. <laughs> And I begin to say, and whoever says to his brother, Rapha, shall be in danger of the council, but whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hell for Therefore, I can't get angry with him. I've got to let God handle that. So I've had all these little things throughout the week where I've had an opportunity to get angry, and in my mind, righteously so. But Jesus tells it in a total different way. Warren Wearsby says this. He says, I have read one out of 35 deaths in Chicago is murder. And most of these murders are crimes of passion caused by anger among friends or relatives. <coughs> Jesus did not say anger leads to murder. He said anger is murder. See, now there's a difference in a righteous anger and an unrighteous anger. Before I get started on the anger that convicted with me, I want to talk to you just for a few moments about unrighteous anger. And that's toward the sin, not the sinner. Understand over in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26, he says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. There is a time and place where we need to be angry at sin. Understand I'm saying the word sin. I am not at one time going to give you permission anywhere throughout the Bible or in, in my sermon to give you permission to be mad at a sinner. A sinner is doing what a sinner is doing. But the sin is what we are commanded to hate. Now I want to say something. I'm going to say it twice because I want you to understand this. But maintaining a godly relationship between your brethren is such a significance that if one has not forgiven sins against his brother, you do not have the right to worship God. I know that one was tough. That one was tough. Let me say it again. Maintaining a godly relationship between brethren is such a significance. It's so important according to the word. That if it has not been forgiving, if you've not been forgiven of sins against your brother, you do not have the right to worship God. He says right there, he says, leave your gift and go be reconciled to your brother. I hear all the time about people in church. And I wrote me a little note, mad at church. People say they go to church and they get upset over something that something was said. Or I went to church and, and Rhonda didn't sing the song I wanted her to sing, so I'm gonna go to a I'm gonna go to a church that'll sing my song. Or I went to church and Brenda said something about Carolina losing, so I'm just gonna leave church. I I went to church and, and Randy didn't shake my hand, so I'm gonna go to another church where they shake my hand. I went to this one church and this, that, and the other. Let me tell you something. If people inside a church is what runs you off, then you were coming for the wrong reason in the first place. Amen. 
Because I didn't come here for you to see me in a shirt and tie. I didn't come here for you to see what kind of socks I was wearing. I didn't come here for you to see how loud I can get. I came here to worship a holy God. A God that's in control. A God that loves me. And he deserves my worship. And he deserves my attention. That's what we're here for. Amen. I hear all the time. I'm not going back to that church because a bunch of hypocrites. And I love, I, I won't say who said it, but John, I told him I wouldn't tell him. But I love that, that. Did I say John? But he was talking about, he was talking to somebody, and, and, and he said, he said, brother, he said, they're talking about hypocrites being in the church. And he said, I almost looked at him and said, we got room for one more. Amen. I thought that was good right there. That's like going into a gym and seeing somebody that's overweight and saying, well, you don't belong here. That's where they belong. They can get help. We get so stuck sometimes on, on, on the church and the traditions and how this and that. When we start focusing on inward things and stop focusing on God, we're going to get mad over everything. Because I guarantee you, something is going to make you mad. Something is not going to go your way. But if you come to worship God and you're here for Him and Him alone, let me tell you something. Hey, isn't nothing in this world is going to make you mad than missing out on a blessing. Amen? Amen? If we start coming to church for the right reason and quit worrying about what Susie over here is wearing. I hope we don't have a Susie in here today. But we quit worrying about what this one's doing or that one's doing and start being concerned about our relationship with God and ourselves. Man, we would cut loose and have a little bit of a revival in here. Yeah. Listen, I don't care what we may think church is supposed to be like. I don't care what order of service we believe it should be in. If we come in with a, a, a righteous spirit and say, God, have your will and your way lead us this morning. We can stay here till 3 o'clock and if we're worshiping God, we won't realize it. That wasn't even my sermon. <laughs> Our anger can create destructive tendencies, but Jesus wants us to handle this properly. Listen here. There was a false interpretation. The Pharisees were only concerned. See, he's, he's quoting something that they have said. You have heard that it was said to those of, er, those of old, you shall not murder. Whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. Now, now I'm not, I really don't want you to raise your hand. But uh, there may be somebody here that may actually have been convicted of murder. And I, I, I want you to understand that Jesus died for you just as much as he died for that one who I'm getting ready to convict of the same crime. That's what he's doing here. He's convicting them of the same crime in which they were throwing rocks at people. They would bring you before counsel if they knew you had murdered somebody. But Jesus said, if you're angry with your brother, you're a murderer. Boy, that just filled the court docket up, didn't it? How many of you all can be honest this morning and say, I've had a day where I've been angry with a brother or sister? Amen. we got some honest folks in here. That's good stuff. We're off to a good start, brother. What you did with that anger? What you did with that anger? And here's why I believe God had me park on this. See, I was going to put a bunch of them together. I was going to put divorce and murder and put them all together. And God said, no, you, you focus on that. Here's what I'm betting. Here's what I'm betting. I'm betting that Jesus had me focus in on that thing and laser in on that thing because there's going to be people this coming Sunday on February the 2nd is going to be under the sound of your voice that is still this day harboring some hate or anger toward their brother. And he didn't want me to pass over this real quick. He wanted me to kind of, kind of grind over this real slow and help people understand that whenever you're angry with somebody, you're as well as murdering them. You're as well as murdering them. The Jewish leaders have reduced it to just, a, just an act. As long as you didn't actually kill them, then you're okay. But Jesus said, if you've been angry at them, you've killed them. Feeling anger. Let me explain this real quick for you. Me and my wife had these wonderful conversations going down the road. And I told her, I said, you know, something that I struggle with is whenever you get these people together and they're, they're so set against Christianity that they say 
horrible, horrible thing. They say things about God and his character and this, that, and the other, and he can't be real. And, and they say these horrible things. And, and I tell her, I said, I really struggle with loving that person because they're talking about my Lord and Savior. They're talking about my God. And whenever they, they take his name lightly and they, 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 they do things that make him look bad and, and they do it on purpose and, and I'm talking about people who are just out and out rebellious against God and they say things. I, tell, I told her, I said, I really struggle. I struggle sometimes with looking at that person and saying, I love you. <laughs> Even though you're telling me I am a fool and I'm an idiot for believing in Jesus and I'm a, I, you're, you're saying all these bad things toward me, I struggle sometimes to look at them and say, I love you. That's what he said to do. He said to hate the sin, not the sinner. See, it's easy for somebody to walk in here and have a suit on like me and for me to walk up to him and say, hey, buddy, I love you. Let me see if you can't come. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, man. <laughs> it's easy for me. Come on up here. I, 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 who, who, you are. I forgot you had that knee thing. I'm, I'm, I'm mean as I'll get out. It's easy for me to see somebody dressed like Randy and say, come on over here. I mean, come on over and say, hey, brother, how you doing? Welcome to Shady Grove Baptist Church. Well, I'm sort of glad you're here. Thanks, I'm sort of glad. I know I'm bald enough. <laughs> First suit I have to <laughs> Yes, sir. But do we act the same way if somebody came in and worshiped us like that? What if they came in and I'm not going to do what I said. I'm not wearing my tight shirt on. <laughs> what if they come in and they don't really maybe look like us? Just kind of <laughs> what if they don't maybe act like us? What if they don't smell as pretty as us? Maybe they don't talk. Over in James, he said not to be partial. To greet the same way I greet that brother is the same way I greet somebody coming off the street. Mm -hmm. We are called to hate the sin, but they're wrapped up in it. <laughs> not the sin. I get so sick and tired. I've got this guy on, uh, here's my rant, I guess. i got this guy on, uh, what do you call it, Instagram. He says I said that wrong. Is it Instagram or Instagram? Insta. Insta. Right. But he gets on there and every time he's every time I just flow through there and he's on there talking, it's always something hateful. Always something hateful. And just no love in his voice and no love. And he calls himself a pastor and he gets up there and he, he talks about, uh, oh, we need to we need to throw off on these people. We need to throw off on that, this, that, and the other. How about instead of throwing off on those people as individuals, we begin to hate what they're doing and start loving them and trying to reach them with everything in us. And instead of sitting back and calling them by bad names and, and this, that, and the other, how about you get out of your comfort zone and maybe try to reach out to one of them? We talk about these people who aren't like us. We talk about the, the, the homosexuals, the, 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 the transgender, uh, uh, oh my goodness, I forgot the acronym now, but the bisexual, the, the left. How about instead of just condemning them and, and picking up our rocks and throwing them at them, how about we try to reach those people? Well, preacher, you don't understand. No, I don't, because Paul was talking over in Romans. He said, he said all these things are sins and all this, that, and the other. Then he, he, he sums it up with what? As were such some of you. He was talking to the church. As were such some of you. Now, I don't know if many of y'all forgot that whenever you were a sinner, you were a sinner. And then you had a past. But he said, though, Love the sin and hate the sin that we're involved in. <laughs> Feeling of anger. The Bible records many condemnations of anger. He says, Psalm 37, 8, he says, Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. Proverbs 16, 32 says, Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules the spirit 
than he who takes a city. Ecclesiastes 7, 9, he says, Be not quick in the spirit to become angry, for anger lodges in the bosoms of fools. James 1, 19 and 20 says, Know this, my brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. I think many times many preachers across the nation think if they get up there and get real angry and spit real far about what sins people are doing, then that, that, that means some kind of righteousness. Let me tell you something. What means righteousness is your ability to get down on their level and go to where they're at and lead them to Jesus Christ. Not get up here and spit on them and tell them about how bad they're doing and where they're at and what they're doing. How about the fact when we can get down on their level and say, listen, God loves you. I was in sin once too and he delivered me. He made a change. Amen? Amen. Hmm. Now I'm getting, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to stay a little calm down this morning. I don't think it's working. But it's so easy, as you see here in the verses, to go straight for their character and to, to, to try to, to try to say bad things about them and to tear them down and to make them look below you and make them this, that, and the other. It's so much easier instead of offering them forgiveness and doing all these things, it's easier to tear them down and make it look like it was their fault. See, he doesn't say this. Now listen to what he says here. I want you to understand this. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and therefore remember that your brother has something against you, you, not that you have something against your brother. You should have already taken care of it if it was something you had against him. But if you know that somebody has something against you, you need to go to them and take care of it. So what does he point us towards? He points us all towards reconciliation. Reconciliation. Be there for reconciliation. Any outward service and an abomination to God is done while harboring unconfessed sinners. As I said at the beginning, you don't have the right to worship God if you're holding something against your brother. As Tafari said up here, Mr. Tafari said up here on Wednesday, he talked about we're, we're not going to see revival until we stop praying. Let me tell you something. When we stop praying, we're going to start realizing we've got some things we need to get out of our lives. And these next six things that we're going to go over, we're going to go over murder, we're going to talk about adultery, we're going to talk about these things. Why? Because I want you to understand that God wants you to be holy. God wants us to be righteous. He wants us to live a life where others can see the light in us and come to him. It is not about coming together and seeing how big our country can get. It's about coming together and seeing how big we can build the kingdom. Amen? And that's what I'm after. I'm after building the kingdom. And we can't do that if we have anger and we're holding things against one another inside the church. Isaiah, let me flip over here. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 10, he says, Hear the word. Judah is showing much wickedness. They're in their sins. They're, they're, they're messing up. And, he, and Isaiah says, Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of sacrifices to me? He said, why are you even sacrificing to me? Says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or the lamb of goats. When you come to appear before me, what is required? This from your hand. To trample my courts, to come in and... And, and to just pretend like you don't have anything against your brother. He says, bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure iniquity in the sacred meeting. And he skips on down. He says, my soul hates. They are trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear and your hands are full of blood. What an indictment. <clears throat> Folks, we cannot hold anger in our hearts and hatred toward people and worship God. We can't. Simple anger must be faced and it must be confessed must go to our brother and get the matter settled quickly and the longer we wait the more in bondage we come to the longer I say I don't have a problem and I convince myself I don't have a problem the harder it is to confess 
the more I try to justify my issues, the more I try to, 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 to make them righteous, the harder it is for me to confess. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot easier for me to, uh, to, to slight Randy and then call him back the next day and say, Randy, I was wrong. I shouldn't have said that to you, brother. I love you. And it is for me to wait 15 years. And say, you remember when I said that? I meant that out of anger. You see how you become in bondage? And I believe that there are people in bondage to their hate. They're in bondage to their anger. Verse 1615 says this. You are justified yourself before men. But God moves your hearts for what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. We must not waste time. We must be reconciled to our brother, our brother, brother. It's a serious matter. I don't, I don't know why I couldn't have them all together, Miss Romney, but I know that he was having to focus in on that one thing. And so I'm left to believe that. Either I'm the only one that got something out of the sermon or the little lady that almost hit me. And by the way, I did pray for her when I got home. <laughs> but I want to read you this. And this, this comes from Mr. Weirdsby. And it hit me really hard because the one that I was talking about that I had to talk to was my brother. I love him dearly. We don't see eye to eye on religious things. But I love him dearly. And this is what he says. He says, It has well been said that the person who refuses to forgive his brother destroys the very bridge over which he himself must walk. It has well been said that the person who refuses to forgive his brother destroys the very bridge over which he himself must walk. Isn't it time we gave up some of this silly anger? Isn't it time that we said enough is enough? I talked with Safari. They were talking about revival. And I'm hurrying, I promise. We're still here. We're past three days. But I said, man, it's got to start with the individual. It's got to start with you, Randy. It's got to start with you, Jim. And you, Miss Randy. And me. And, and you. You, it's got to start with us. We have to get our hearts in line, right? We have to get ourselves back to a place where we can pray. Well, how can we pray? We've got to be right with God. How do we get right with God? We pray. We confess our faults to Him. But until then, it's just going to be hello, Sunday morning. Up to say and go home. I don't want to come to church to be a mighty work of God. I don't want to see people in Randolph County. Now listen, I don't want to see people in Randolph County that people would say, you'll never see that person in church. I don't want to see them accepted in this church. I want to hear. The, the, the testimonies of people who said, I thought I would never come to church. I prayed this prayer, and it's a dangerous prayer, I know. But I said, God, send me the people that nobody else wants. God, send me them. I'll take them. I'll love them. I'll get down where they're at. I'll come down to where they are. God, send them to me. I will. 
And God, I pray you raise up some people in Shady Grove Baptist Church that have enough backbone to stand up and say, Preacher, I'll stand with you. I'll love them. I'll go to them. I'll pray with them. I'll sit in the, the, the ditch with them. I'll go to the hospital with them. I'll walk them through getting off alcohol. I'll walk them through the steps of going through getting off drugs and all this other mess. Are they going to mess up? Yes. But he called us to love them. He didn't call us to, if they do good, we'll stick with them. He called us to be long-suffering with them. That's who I'm calling to come to the church. Preacher, don't you need people that can pay tithes and this, that, and the other? I would rather God continue to provide for me than me sit and worry about getting a bunch of rich folks in the church. I want God to send me the unwantables. I want him to send the people that nobody else wants to deal with. Those are the ones I want. Because I want them to know that Jesus Christ loves them. He loves them more than they could ever imagine. Those are the people I want to reach. I'm praying God send them through the door. Every shape, form, or fashion. We want them. We want the ones that nobody else wants. The throwaways. God, I'm tired of praying for that one who's never going to come to the Lord. Because I was one of them. Because he made the changes. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your love. God, I pray. That each person gathered here, Lord, I know. I know we can harbor anger. We can harbor anger like nobody can do. Lord, we are stubborn. And we can get mad. God, I pray right now that you go through each and every aisle, each and every pew. God, help us to understand that we need to be broken for the lost. God, we're not going to be broken for anything until we become broken over the sin that exists in our lives right now. God, break us over any anger. Break us over any hate. Break us over anything that we are harboring that can keep us from worshiping you in spirit and truth. God, help us to get serious with you. God, I know that you convict the hearts of your people. God, I pray that you just do that. And Lord, as we begin to close, I pray that you help each one, Lord, come to grips with what they need to do. God, I just thank you and I love you, Lord, and I ask all these things.